the thick fog lingered like a ghostly shroud over Baker Street, casting shadows that danced upon the cobblestones. Inside 221B, the legendary detective Sherlock Holmes reclined in his favorite armchair, lost in thought, while his ever-loyal companion, Dr. John Watson, sat nearby, perusing the morning paper. The sudden clamor of footsteps interrupted the tranquil atmosphere. A disheveled figure burst through the door, breathing heavily, his spectacles askew and his coat in disarray. It was Mr. Edgarsworth, a clerk from a nearby office, his face flushed with panic. Mr. Holmes, he exclaimed, his voice trembling with urgency. I beg your assistance. Something terrible has happened. Holmes regarded the man with keen interest, his piercing gaze analyzing every detail. Pray, calm yourself, Mr. Edgarsworth, he said, his tone soothing yet authoritative. Tell us what has transpired. Edgarsworth took a moment to compose himself before speaking. It's my spectacles, sir. They've been stolen. Holmes arched an eyebrow, intrigued by the seemingly trivial matter. Stolen spectacles? He mused. Surely, a pair of eyeglasses would not warrant such distress. Watson, ever the compassionate soul, interjected, perhaps they hold sentimental value, Holmes. But Edgarsworth shook his head vehemently. No, no, you don't understand, he exclaimed, his voice quivering with fear. These spectacles were not ordinary. They contained a secret, a map etched onto the inner lens. Holmes leaned forward, his interest piqued. A map, you say? Pray, elaborate. With a deep breath, Edgarsworth recounted the events leading to the disappearance of his spectacles. I work in the archives of a prestigious law firm, he began. Last night, I discovered the spectacles missing from my desk drawer. But it wasn't until I inspected them closely that I realized their true significance. Holmes listened intently as Edgarsworth revealed the nature of the map and its supposed destination, a hidden chamber beneath the Tower of London, rumored to hold a long-lost artifact of immense power. Curious indeed, remarked Holmes, his mind already worrying with possibilities. And what, pray tell, is the nature of this artifact? Edgarsworth hesitated, as if unsure whether to divulge the full extent of his knowledge. I cannot say for certain, he admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. But rumors abound of its supernatural properties, a relic of untold power, coveted by those who would harness its might for their own nefarious ends. Holmes nodded thoughtfully, his keen intellect already piecing together the puzzle. Very well, Mr. Edgarsworth. You have my word, we shall endeavor to recover your stolen spectacles and unravel the mystery they conceal. The investigation into the stolen spectacles plunged Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson into the murky depths of London's underworld where whispers of secret societies and arcane rituals lingered like a dark cloud over the city. Holmes wasted no time in delving into the world of clandestine organizations, employing his formidable intellect and network of informants to unearth any scrap of information that might shed light on the mysterious disappearance. It wasn't long before he stumbled upon a name that sent a shiver down his spine, the Arcana Obscura. Rumored to be a society obsessed with the occult and ancient mysteries, the Arcana Obscura operated in the shadows, their activities cloaked in secrecy. Holmes's research revealed tantalizing fragments of information, a series of cryptic symbols etched into the walls of abandoned buildings, whispered conversations in dimly lit taverns, and veiled references in obscure texts. But it was the name of their enigmatic leader that sent a chill down Holmes's spine, Professor Moriarty. Moriarty was a name synonymous with cunning and treachery, a shadowy figure whose influence extended like a web, ensnaring those who dared to cross his path. Holmes had encountered Moriarty's machinations on more than one occasion, each encounter leaving him with a lingering sense of unease. As Holmes delved deeper into the world of the Arcana Obscura, he uncovered a web of intrigue that stretched far beyond the confines of London. The society's members were drawn from all walks of life, wealthy aristocrats, disillusioned scholars, and desperate souls seeking power at any cost. But it was their insatiable hunger for ancient secrets that set them apart, a hunger that had led them to steal Mr. Edgarsworth's seemingly insignificant spectacles in their quest for the ultimate prize. Days turned into weeks as Holmes and Watson tirelessly pursued leads, their investigation taking them to the darkest corners of the city. They encountered danger at every turn, facing off against hired thugs, dodging traps set by their elusive foes, and unraveling cryptic puzzles that seemed designed to thwart their every move. But through it all, Holmes remained undeterred, his keen intellect and razor-sharp wit guiding them through the labyrinthine maze of deception and deceit. And as they drew closer to uncovering the truth behind the stolen spectacles, Holmes knew that the final showdown with Professor Moriarty and the Arcana Obscura was inevitable. For lurking beneath the surface of polite society, a storm was brewing, a storm of darkness and chaos that threatened to engulf them all. 
and only Sherlock Holmes stood between London and the abyss. The air crackled with anticipation as Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson prepared to infiltrate the grand masquerade ball rumor to be frequented by members of the Arcana Obscura. Disguised in elaborate costumes that concealed their true identities, they ventured into the opulent halls of the mansion where the ball was being held. The scene was a whirlwind of color and extravagance, with masked figures twirling across the dance floor and laughter mingling with the strains of music. Holmes and Watson moved through the crowd with practiced ease, their eyes keenly scanning the faces around them for any sign of their elusive quarry. It wasn't long before they spotted their target, a cloaked figure lurking in the shadows, watching the festivities with a calculating gaze. Holmes's heart quickened with anticipation as he recognized the telltale signs of a member of the Arcana Obscura. With a silent nod to Watson, Holmes began to weave his way through the crowd, his senses alert for any sign of danger. But before he could reach his target, the cloaked figure slipped away into the darkness, a package clutched tightly in his hand. A thrilling chase ensued as Holmes and Watson pursued the fleeing figure through the labyrinthine corridors of the mansion. Dodging past startled party-goers and vaulting over ornate furniture, they raced to catch up to their quarry before he could vanish into the night. Finally, they cornered the thief in a dimly lit alcove, his back pressed against the cold stone wall as Holmes and Watson closed in. With a swift motion, Holmes disarmed the man and pried the package from his grasp, revealing the stolen spectacles nestled within. But their victory was short-lived, for even as they celebrated their success, they knew that time was running out. The spectacles held the key to unlocking the mystery of the hidden chamber beneath the Tower of London, and they could not afford to waste a moment. With grim determination, Holmes and Watson set out once more into the night, their footsteps echoing against the cobblestones as they raced to decipher the secrets concealed within the lenses of the stolen spectacles. For lurking in the shadows, the forces of the Arcana Obscura were gathering strength, and only Sherlock Holmes stood between them and the unimaginable power they sought to unleash upon the world. With the stolen spectacles safely back in his possession, Sherlock Holmes retreated to the familiar confines of 221B Baker Street, where he could unravel the enigma they held in peace. Seated at his cluttered desk, surrounded by stacks of papers and scientific instruments, Holmes meticulously examined the spectacles under the soft glow of lamplight. Using a powerful magnifying glass, Holmes scrutinized every inch of the eyewear, his keen eyes searching for any clue, however minute, that might reveal the secret concealed within. And then, as if by divine intervention, he spotted it, a faint inscription etched onto the inner lens, invisible to the naked eye. With bated breath, Holmes leaned closer, his mind racing with possibilities. Carefully, he transcribed the inscription onto a sheet of paper, his hand steady despite the anticipation coursing through his veins. And then, with a flourish, he stepped back, the mystery of the stolen spectacles finally laid bare before him. But this was no ordinary map, as Mr. Edgarsworth had believed. No, it was something far more intriguing, a complex mathematical formula, its symbols and equations dancing across the page in a hypnotic rhythm. And as Holmes studied the formula, a realization dawned upon him, a realization that would change everything. For hidden within the seemingly innocuous spectacles was not a map to a hidden chamber beneath the Tower of London, but a blueprint for something far more extraordinary, a weapon of unimaginable power. Days turned into weeks as Holmes dedicated himself to deciphering the intricacies of the formula, his mind a whirlwind of calculations and hypotheses. With each passing hour, he drew closer to unlocking the secret it held, his determination unyielding in the face of adversity. And then, one fateful morning, it happened, the final piece of the puzzle fell into place, and the formula yielded its long-held secret. With a triumphant cry, Holmes leapt from his chair, his eyes blazing with newfound understanding. The artifact, he exclaimed to his bewildered companion, Dr. John Watson, it's not a physical object, but a scientific breakthrough, a formula capable of harnessing immense energy. Watson stared at Holmes in awe, the gravity of his words sinking in. But what kind of energy? He asked, his voice tinged with apprehension. Holmes smiled, a glint of mischief dancing in his eyes. The kind of energy that could reshape the very fabric of reality, he replied cryptically. And with that, Holmes set to work, his mind ablaze with the possibilities that lay before him. For he knew that with great power came great responsibility, and it was up to him to ensure that the secrets of the stolen spectacles remained safely within his grasp. But little did he know that the true test lay ahead, a test of wit and cunning that would push him to the very limits of his abilities. For lurking in the shadows was a foe unlike any he had faced before, a foe who would stop at nothing to claim the power of the stolen spectacles for themselves. And so, with the fate of London hanging in the balance, Sherlock Holmes prepared himself for the final showdown, a showdown that would determine the course of history itself. 
the stage was set for the ultimate showdown between Sherlock Holmes and his arch nemesis, Professor Moriarty. In a secluded warehouse on the outskirts of London, the air crackled with tension as the two adversaries faced off, their gazes locked in a battle of wills. Surrounded by a cadre of Moriarty's loyal henchmen, the professor stood tall, a sinister smile playing at the corners of his lips. Ah, Mr. Holmes, he purred, his voice dripping with malice. I must admit, I never thought you would be foolish enough to walk into my trap so willingly. Holmes remained unfazed, his steely gaze betraying none of the apprehension he felt deep within. Your machinations are transparent, Moriarty, he replied coolly. I am here not out of foolishness, but out of necessity, to put an end to your reign of terror once and for all. Moriarty chuckled, the sound sending a shiver down Watson's spine. Bold words, Mr. Holmes, he said, his eyes gleaming with malevolence. But words will avail you nothing in the face of true power. With a flick of his wrist, Moriarty signaled his henchmen to advance, their weapons glinting in the dim light. But Holmes was ready, his mind already racing with strategies and counterattacks. In a flurry of movement, the warehouse erupted into chaos as Holmes and his allies clashed with Moriarty's forces. Fists flew, bullets ricocheted off metal beams, and the air was filled with the sound of grunts and curses. But amidst the chaos, Holmes remained focused, his keen intellect guiding him through the fray. With each opponent he dispatched, he drew closer to his ultimate goal, the retrieval of the stolen spectacles and the prevention of Moriarty's diabolical scheme. And then, in a moment of clarity, Holmes saw his opportunity. With a lightning-quick maneuver, he disarmed the last of Moriarty's henchmen and turned his attention to the professor himself. You've lost, Moriarty, Holmes declared, his voice ringing with conviction. Your grand scheme has been foiled, and your reign of terror is at an end. Moriarty sneered, his eyes ablaze with fury. You may have won this battle, Holmes, he spat, but the war is far from over. Mark my words, I will rise again, and when I do, you will rue the day you cross paths with Professor James Moriarty. With that, Moriarty vanished into the shadows, leaving Holmes and his companions to pick up the pieces of the shattered warehouse. As they surveyed the scene before them, a sense of relief washed over them, a relief tempered by the knowledge that their victory had come at a great cost. But amidst the wreckage, there was one thing that remained unchanged, the unassuming pair of spectacles that had sparked the entire saga. With a sense of reverence, Holmes retrieved them from where they lay, their lenses glinting in the faint light. These spectacles may have caused us no end of trouble, Holmes mused, but they have also led us to uncover a greater truth, one that may yet shape the course of history. And with that, Sherlock Holmes and Dr. John Watson returned to 221B Baker Street, their minds already turning to the next great mystery that awaited them, a mystery that would test their mettle as never before. For as long as there were secrets to uncover and injustices to right, Sherlock Holmes would always be ready to answer the call of duty, his indomitable spirit serving as a beacon of hope in a world shrouded in darkness.